I'm going to talk to you real quickly here about the political structure of the Antichrist government that's coming. Um, I'm going to call this the Devil's Triangle. Okay? And uh, you're going to see here what I'm talking about, the three parts of this coming political system. Okay, the Devil's Triangle. I'm going to try to get this thing out pretty quickly, so just bear with me. Let's draw a big triangle here. Just a quick drawing, nothing real special. All right, so what is the Devil's Triangle? Well, obviously it consists of three different things. At the very top, and I want you to bear with me, bear, bear with me here, this is going to be some interesting stuff. You have the IF. B system slash Catholic. And we'll make some points on this to prove what I'm saying. All right, that's at the top. Independent, independent fundamental Baptist slash Catholic, Roman Catholic. Bear with me, okay? Because the modern IFB system is not the original what Baptists were hundreds of years ago. But uh, like I said, stick with me here for a minute. I'll prove my point. Down here, in this corner, we have the military, and you could say the industrial, military-industrial complex, okay? But we're just going to go with military. Over here, we have the, uh, I'll, just call, I'll just call it the alt-right, okay? The uh, radical right-wing movement over here. So you have Catholic, Independent Fundamental Baptist slash Catholic, Military, and Alt-Right. Okay? Now, if anything's going to get me kicked off of YouTube, it's probably going to be this uh, little video here. Um, they're trying more and more to get me kicked off. Uh, there are guys in uh, military intelligence types that have been threatening me and things like this. So, um, how long this channel is going to exist, I don't know. But uh, the one that really controls the internet is down here. Don't think for one second that it's the left liberals and things like this. No, it's the military. But uh, just make, let me make a couple points here, okay? Now, think about this. With the, up here, because I know everybody's going, that's crazy and everything else. The IFB Catholic thing, that's nonsense. Let's make a couple points here. First of all, what are these two groups here? And I'm talking pre-Vatican II Catholics, okay? I'm not talking the modern whatever Catholics. I'm talking pre-Vatican II Catholics and the radical independent fundamental Baptists, okay? What do they have in common? Both of them talk about old-time religion, all right? They're both very interested in that. Pre-Vatican II Catholics, they're not happy with the modern Catholic Church. Independent fundamental Baptists are not happy with the modern Baptist churches. They both talk about the glory days, the old ways, and stuff like this before the modern corruption came in. Okay? Absolute truth. Both of them are interested in revival. Talk about revival a lot. We've got to bring back the church. The church the way it should be. Both systems, IFB and Roman Catholic, pre-Vatican II, Radical Catholic, both talk about the authority of the man of God. All right? Over here you have the Pope, over here you have the preacher. And you don't question. Again, you know, I've done plenty of studies on this whole thing. The IFB system, you get a real true IFB -er. These and they get into this man of God thing, the Jack Hiles system. A lot of the guys that are spin-offs of Jack Hiles, and they will come out and they will say, You don't dare question the man of God. Even if you disagree, even if you know he's doing wrong, you don't come out against the man of God. He's God's appointed man. Same thing that the Catholics teach. Interesting. So, both the IFB and the Catholic believe that they are the true path of salvation. There's no salvation outside of these systems. They'll question you. If you're not IFB, well, I don't know. You might not be saved. You're, you're a false convert and whatever else. And I understand that the Bible does talk about the thing of, of you know... Um, uh, perils among you know false brethren and things like that. There are false converts. I understand that. But this whole Baptist system does not line up with the teachings of the King James Bible. 
what they do is a lot of tradition that has entered in and, and usurps the authority of Scripture, just like over here. And of course, the Catholic teaching that there is only one true church and all, must, all are obliged to belong to the one true church in order to be saved. You see? The next point, Protestant versus Catholic. And the IFBers will vehemently, we're not Protestant, we're not Protestant. Um, well, the more modern manifestation of the independent fundamental Baptist churches are Protestant. Yes, they are. And most of the quote-unquote Protestant denominations like the Methodists, the Lutherans, the Episcopalians, the Presbyterians, and whatever else are fully back over into modern-day apostate Catholicism. All right. So again, but you have Protestant versus Catholic here in the upper realm here, the, the radical sides of it, where you have, they will have disagreements on different things. The IFBers say, you know, the gospel is faith alone. The Catholic says, well, faith and works. They go back and forth and they have their little theological differences. But you don't see too many IFB, radical IFB preachers that are really exposing the Roman Catholicism for what it is and turning people away from Roman Catholicism. And in fact, you'll see some swapping back and forth here, which comes down to this section right here. You'll see radical Roman Catholic, you know, men in the military that also like to listen to some IFB stuff. There's a lot of agreement between these three systems. Let me continue. I'll prove that. Um, but here's the, th the here's the thing: Protestant Catholic, they'll join together to fight the common enemy. You say, what's that? Uh, well, Black Lives Matter, Antifa, communism, Muslim Islamic terrorism. Mm -hmm. It's the system of Antichrist that's coming in, the Patriot Movement. And again, I, we were talking about this years and years ago, um, three of us, okay, long before I even knew my wife, uh, the guys I was involved with at, at uh, Bible Believers Fellowship, down in Pennsylvania. Um, Brother Jesse Dolesky, Brother Derek Stoll, and myself. Uh, we were all faithful Baptists at Liberty Baptist Church, and we started to wake up to what the whole Baptist system was. And uh, Brother Jesse was a retired, well, no, I shouldn't say retired, like he was an older man. He was younger, but he had left the military. He was a, a um, sergeant in the Marine Corps and had left the Marines. And, um, uh, you know, and Derek and myself were, were both just civilian, whatever, but understanding the military aspect of things. So it's very interesting. We were way, 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 way back saying, I wonder if this modern patriot movement is actually going to be the movement of the Antichrist. We'll get back to that in just a couple of minutes here. Just give me a minute. <laughs> both IFB and Catholic both elevate their church buildings. They think that it's holy to go to some building and call it a church. And you have to wear special uniforms and stuff like this. Interesting. And both of these groups, the IFB and the Catholics, are both radically pro-military. You understand? I mean, I've been in independent fundamental Baptist churches, and there's guys standing around talking about stories, military type of stories, laughing about killing civilians over in Iraq and Afghanistan. I've heard them making jokes about bombing civilian areas, civilian cities and things like this, and laughing from the pulpit. And the whole congregation at the Baptist church laughing about men, women, and children being killed. I've seen it. I've been there. I've sat there in the pews. Mm -hmm. Radically pro-military. Pre-Vatican II Catholics, radically pro-military. They're a lot more common than most people want to admit. You know, there's some theological differences, but really, their core beliefs, very similar. Now let's go down here. The military. What's one of their big teachings? The military is a thing about team players. There's, you know, you have to have your battle buddy when you go into the military and things, basic training and whatnot. You are, just, you are part of a unit. You are part of a, a group. It's discouraged to be an individual in the military. Okay? Same thing up here. I've been told that I'm an isolationist and a hermit and whatever else. And, and uh, how dare you? You're not part of a local church. You need to be part of a local church. 
Mm -hmm. You see? And I understand that there are, you know, Ephesians chapter 6 talks about, you know, uh, you know compares us to soldiers and things like that. Second Timothy chapter 2 talks about, uh, you know, um, you know, comparing us to soldiers again. You know, I'm trying to keep this thing fairly short so we're not going to go to those places. But, again, on, over here, military, you have a command structure. Back up to the man of God thing. You don't dare question the preacher. And you have the deacons and you have the other, the command structure here. But you read the King James Bible, the men that are in ministry up here that have the oversight, I shouldn't even be pointing at that, the men that the elders that are overseeing the flock are to be as examples. They're all to submit themselves one to another. All right? They're, they're to have the rule there, yeah, that's true. Teaching and things and keeping order, but they're not support, supposed to lord over the flock. And yet the IFBers and the Catholics do just like they do in the military, the command structure. And again, I know IFB uh, institutions, Bible institutes and stuff like this that will literally use military ranks for their Bible graduation. James Melton does it. There's a guy in uh, Ohio, uh, East Step or something like that. When I was at uh, um, Eldred, Pennsylvania, the pastor there, Bruce Ireland, um, actually had gone through this Bible institute and they, you come out as a captain or a general or a you know, lieutenant or whatever else, depending on how far up you go in your Bible college training. I'm not joking. Baptists will use military terminology as far as their command structure. Military, what's one of their big things? For God and country. You're fighting for God and country. Where are they getting the religious aspect of it? You see? Up there. The military uses Jesuitical tactics and speech. Again, up here. They'll say, we're bringing in peacekeeping forces. Huh? You know, these are peacekeeping weapons and soldiers and bombers and tanks. They're here to keep the peace. Uh, they're designed to kill. How can that be a peacekeeping force? And what you understand is, when you start to understand this whole thing, you will start to see military tactics being used up here in this system. And of course down here too, the whole thing ties together. Another big thing with the military that you're going to understand if you get into studying some of this stuff, they are the ones who test out all the high-tech gadgetry out there. Again, there are plenty of stories of, uh, I was watching a thing this morning about the Air Force and some of the uh, high-tech weaponry that they were using going back to Vietnam. They were having, uh, I think, the uh, Blackbird, the, uh, was it the A-12 or SR-71 or something, uh, Blackbird uh, fighter jet, you know, and they were basically using the thing for reconnaissance back in the Vietnam era, and they were saying the thing could fly from coast to coast here in America in 67 minutes, an hour and seven minutes, flying from coast to coast. They said the thing was so scary fast. Incredible. During the 60s and 70s, what do they have now? The military already has rolled out ID cards with RFID chips in them. Special operations. Again, you know, a brother that I mentioned earlier, uh, Brother Jesse Dulesky, was telling me special operations guys were already getting implanted with microchips back when he was in the military. Yeah. You get into top secret security level clearance type of stuff and things like this where you're going through testing and whatever else. They're getting into implantable microchips and being tracked and the whole deal. For their safety, of course. But what about the alt-right here, the alternative right? The right that, you know, has said, oh, we're the, the uh, you know, the Republicans and things don't go far enough. We need to, we need to be even more can, uh, radical and things like this. Well, they're racist. Neo-Nazis, essentially. Uh, what were the Nazis again? Um, the hierarchy was Roman Catholic. Signed a concordant with the Pope, Pope Pius XII. Yeah, it was a Catholic Inquisition. It was the whole Nazi movement. Again, I proved that over and over and over again in my studies. The alt-right is anti-Semitic. They don't like the Jewish people. The Zionist conspiracy. Well, guess what? In the military, I don't know if I have the book yet yeah, right here, this guy, Michael Levine, 
I have some more information coming about out about this guy. Um, Michael Levine, former DEA agent and best-selling author of Deep Cover. Right there you go, the big white lie, talking about how the government brings in the cocaine and things like that. Michael Levine was a Jew. And he was basically persecuted many, many times because of the fact that he was Jewish. And there are, again, there are the whole stories of, of uh, special operations types of guys, military intelligence types of guys. They won't let Jews in into the higher levels of the uh, military. And you start to look at some of the control structure of what's going on with the military, it goes back to the Catholics. And I have a video uh, where I showed there was a Baptist preacher, independent fundamental Baptist preacher, who was giving, he was being given awards by the military as the officer of deception for the year. Active duty military, and he's a independent fundamental Baptist. And you look at these guys over and over and over and over again, they're in bed with the military, the Baptists, active duty, former military, things like that, military veterans in the IFB movement. Hmm. Patriotism. Forgotten country. You see? Again, it goes up to this movement here. Very radically patriotic. This movement down here is all about we should kill terrorists. Just like the military. Up here, exterminate the heretics. You see? And if you think that the IFBers out there, some of the more radical ones, don't want to kill the terrorists, uh, you're quite foolish. <laughs> they would gladly kill the terrorists. Down here, another point I want to make is they lack good, strong leadership. Okay? They're looking for a leader. Hmm. Like maybe one coming in the future. The Nazi movement was into sort of the main, a lot of the right wing type of stuff there. Radical Roman Catholic, military, right wing, white supremacy. You see? You bring all the things together, they needed their leader, Hitler. Adolf Hitler. Who's going to be the next leader of this movement? The Antichrist. Okay? But now I want you to think about one other thing here. The infamous system that has been used many, many times, it's a philosophy called the Hegelian dialectic. It's based on three different things. You have thesis here. Anti- thesis or antithesis if you want to say it that way and then finally you have synthesis okay so what's the thesis and you could mix the thesis and, and antithesis around but let's just go with this thesis you have capitalism okay antithesis what do we have Communism. How do you bring the two together? Fascism. Fascism. Right there. That's what we're looking at for the future. The Antichrist system, the Devil's Triangle, is going to be fascism. That is going to be the Antichrist system of government right here. Again, you get this whole thing. They'll say, oh, no, the Antichrist is it's about the ecumenical movement, all religions coming together and just a you know, one world religion that we're all are accepted. That is nonsense. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 13, the whole world is going to worship the beast. One religious system. And it's not going to be Islam. Don't fall for that. That is nonsense. It's completely nonsense. You get the Antichrist sitting on a throne in a holy temple and calling himself God. The Pope already does that. Show me some leader in Islam that does that. That They don't do it. And I'm no fan of Islam, believe me. Islam is, again, a creation of Roman Catholicism. But fascism is your system. Right-wing fascism. 
This is the system that's going to be the Antichrist governmental structure. Again, the Antichrist comes in and he brings war. And racism is the best way to divide people. Divide and conquer. Jesuitical military tactic. All right? IFBs and the Catholics. Protestant versus Catholic. Coming together to form fascism. To fight the enemy of communism. Antifa. And uh, Black Lives Matter and a lot of these other organizations. The whole liberal movement. That's what's going to happen. Let me make a couple other points here. Why is it that all of these different rallies and things like this, the police are standing down and letting the radical left riot and destroy things, burn things and, and all this other stuff? Why? Because it's going to be used to get this movement kicked into high gear. The whites are getting sick and tired of it. They're getting sick and tired of being pushed around and everything's blamed on the white people. And if you say, I'm glad I'm a German American or something, you're a racist. But they can say they're black American and they're not racist. You see? They want to rise, raise this thing up because it's part of the devil's triangle for right-wing fascism. See? That's important for them. I saw recently here, just in the last couple of days, uh, Faith Goldie. I've talked about her somewhat before. Um, very radical Roman Catholic of the right-wing system here. She spoke, she was at this whole thing in Charlottesville, Virginia. She spoke at a right, on the, some alt-right uh, program or whatever else. She spoke at the thing and stuff. And her Jewish boss, Ezra Levant, I think the guy's name is, from Rebel Media, he fired her because she was being rough, I guess, on, on sex perverts and things like that. And uh, sodomites, you know. And the transgender, the whole thing, whatever else there. But she was fired for being on an alt-right program. And she's coming out a radical Catholic and things like this. I saw that she was in Phoenix, Arizona not long ago. Uh, near where a certain pastor that I don't like very much uh, is headquartered out of. No connection, I'm sure, there. She was down there to shoot firearms at a gun place and things. Another one that's that's crazy is uh, Anne Barnhart, another radical Roman Catholic. Again, I've talked about her, you know, burning the Koran and saying about, you know, uh, inviting Muslims to come after her and, that you know, get in a gunfight, essentially. Um, Black Lives Matter and Antifa getting white people ready for war. Again, I've talked about that. I just wrote down a couple points here. Infowars, again, Alex Jones radicalizing the right wing, you know, uh, again, fascism, trying to bring that whole thing in. You know, we have to unite to destroy the new world order. They're setting up a phony new world order system that is everybody getting together and the globalists and all this other stuff. And how are you going to unite? You know, we need to come together to destroy the enemy, the perceived enemy. See, what are they doing? What are they getting ready to do? Unite under the Antichrist. The ultra-right. The military. IFB Catholic. All coming together. Right-wing fascism. Okay? Um, you know, again, military spooks and things. Humanist internet. Uh, or, excuse me, not humanist. I'm reading my notes wrong. Human, human intelligence in the military. A military intelligence. They're the ones that control the internet. Again, they're hiding behind this veil of, oh, it's the radical liberals. They're getting that, they're doing that thing, you see, promoting the antithesis here, the communism. They're doing it to get the right-wingers upset and angry. Okay? Uh, this is really, really crazy stuff. Um, uh, what's the next thing here? Uh, Antichrist Patriot Movement versus Ecumenism. Okay, I talked about that. Another guy, Clay Higgins, Republican congressman from Louisiana and a radical Catholic. Again, I've done a video on that guy. Again, calling for violence and things like this. Calling criminals heathen and saying that they've attacked Christ, Christ's church and stuff like this, meaning that they've attacked a Roman Catholic uh, you know, church building and things. Um, and the guy's a congressman now. He went from being a police captain, I think he was, down in Louisiana now, he's a, con a Republican congressman. Um, very, very radical man. And uh, definitely has the charismatic personality that he could really influence a lot of people in this whole system right here. Okay? Um, another thing, I'm going to be showing a video on this in 
uh, we're going to be doing a Camtasia video and bringing this information out. Crazy stuff. Uh, Steven Anderson is part of, he has an actual website called the Trueborn Sons of Liberty. Okay, again, the patriotic movement, this whole thing tying together. Another one is the uh, Black Robe, or the Black Regiment, it's called, Chuck Baldwin. Again, this, this Baptist military right-wing conspiracy thing joining together. Um, the Black Robe, the Black Robes, I'll say it that way, was a nickname for Jesuit missionaries centuries ago. And I understand they'll say, well, yes, but it was also the early pastors during the Revolutionary War era and stuff like this. Um, I don't know too many Bible-believing preachers that are wearing black robes when they preach. And I know a lot of them, they did, the, the Anglicans and stuff like this, you know. Uh, George Whitfield, let me get the book here. Uh, where is it at? I have the book here someplace. But they, a lot of these, you know, preachers back in the, that time period, they would wear these black robes. Um, you know, no scripture for that. But I've shared it in other studies. I don't, I don't know where it is right now. I'm just looking here. Can't find it. But, uh, oh yeah, right here. Okay. I was looking at the wrong kind of title. Okay, there you can see his black robe. And so they called him the Black Robe Regiment or Black Regiment and things like this. These ordained clergy and things, you know, and stuff. But see, you say, well, see, but it was good preachers and then the Jesuits, they wore black robes too. Um, why would you wear a black robe when there's nothing in Scripture that says to do that? And knowingly wearing it at the same time that Jesuits are going around the country with black robes on, known as the Black Robe Regiment. It's very dangerous. Very dangerous. And I'm going to be showing you some of the names on uh, this Black Regiment list. And we're going to be recording it, and we're going to be getting it out about the same time as this video comes out, because they'll probably end up taking things down or changing things and whatever else. That happens so many times, it's, it's just crazy. And again, you know, I, I need to say this. I did not say this in my video I did recently on the thing of uh, chastening, I believe it was. Or, no, it was the... Uh, yeah, I think it was that one, where I brought out the thing about, about Jack Hiles, and I didn't make my point. I was going to, and then I got kind of sidetracked, if you can imagine that. And um, I said about this thing, it's so weird, that I brought out a video against Jack Hiles. Big IF beer, big time pro-military, and, and into many of the, the things, maybe not an open racist, but you know, into many things with the uh, right wing and stuff like that. And you would think that the quote-unquote liberal uh, YouTube would just be clapping and applauding me and saying, oh, good, you're attacking the uh, IFB movement. And yet my video has been banned in a lot of countries other than America. I wonder why that would be. Why would liberals ban a video against a Baptist preacher and a Baptist system? Isn't that weird? And why are liberals going after me when I'm attacking a lot of the things that they supposedly are attacking? Because it's not the liberals that are running the internet. It's the military. Right there. Um, what's going to happen in the future? Well, I'm telling you what's going to be happening. This is the system of the Antichrist right here. It's not going to be radical Islam. It's not going to be a New World Order, United Nations type of a thing, whatever, whatever. That stuff is a smokescreen. It is going to be radical Roman Catholicism, just like the Bible teaches, Revelation 17, Revelation 18. The woman rides the beast. Do you understand? It's Roman Catholicism using right-wing fascism. Okay, And again, racial prophecy that was given way back in Genesis by Noah. Japheth, God shall enlarge Japheth. The white races of Europe are the ones that go out and make the wars. The biggest wars have always been the white nations. That's the way it's going to be. Black Lives Matter comes along and says, oh, we're going to overthrow the whites and things like this. We're going to destroy all this uh, Confederate stuff and everything else. They're being set up for a slaughter. When the right unites with religion and the military, because of a charismatic leader bringing in right-wing fascism, it's going to be this death and destruction to Black Lives Matter, the communistic movement, and 
Islam. I'm telling you. <laughs> and you say, what are we supposed to do about it? Get saved. That is your only chance. The only chance. You want to have equality and things like that? Read Galatians chapter 3. All right? Equality only comes through salvation, through the Lord Jesus Christ. You think that you're going to be heading into a world where things are going to be nice and everybody's going to get along and stuff? You are out of your mind. You're out of your mind, completely out of your mind. The Antichrist brings war. He brings right-wing fascism. Total death, annihilation, destruction. Yeah. And if you're Jewish, <laughs> let me tell you something. All three of these groups are against you. I should say four of these groups. Actual old-time Baptists are not against the Jews. Many of them were, were very much Zion, you know, supporters of the Zionism type of movement. But the new branch, the new variety that's coming out with Stephen Anderson heading the thing and a lot of these other guys, Sam Adams and things like that down in Florida, again, the Black Regiment, uh, Chuck Baldwin, these guys are anti-Semitic. They teach replacement theology exactly as Roman Catholics have for centuries. Unite the right. You better wake up. You better wake up. You better get saved. The second Holocaust is coming. You better get saved. There's not much time left. <laughs>